Hello class, this is a video to talk about how to navigate within our course and how to navigate within Canvas. I am noticing that there are um, a couple of students who are still having some trouble figuring out what they're supposed to do, where they're supposed to find lectures, all of that good stuff. So because of that, when you come into the class, you definitely want to click on 1414 section 067. It always opens it to the home page. Now, if you click here, as I hover over it, it says modules. So if you click there, what it does is it opens up your module view. But you can also get to the module view over here in the left navigation bar. Um, so if I click on modules on the left, it takes me to the same place. Okay. Module views is where you want to be. Okay. And not only do you want to be in the module view, but you also need to be in the full website version of the module, okay? You don't wanna be doing this on the Canvas app or to be doing it on a cellular phone, okay? Not everything pops up for some reason on those different kinds of devices. So please make sure you are using um, a laptop or a computer and that you are um, in the full website version, okay? So when in here, um, I did reorganize it a little bit, so it does look a little different. So in here, I had everything, and it seemed to not be as helpful as I intended, okay? Because most folks were not clicking on this at all, or they were clicking on it and not scrolling down far enough to see where the lectures were. So I wanted to make it a little bit more accessible for and easier for students to find the lectures and easier for students to find what they need to do for the week, okay? So if you click on the module overview, it does tell you all the things that we'll be learning how to do this week. And then it even tells you what sections we should be covering in a particular week, okay? Um, now I do have these days on here, like Tuesday, Wednesday, all of that stuff. We can ignore that. Um, that's, um, you don't have, you're an online class, so you don't have to specifically do this on a specific day, okay? So don't worry about um, meeting the deadline. I don't know why that's in there. I have to edit this. I'm gonna unpublish it for a second until I edit it. But it should just have the outcomes and then the timeline, okay? Um, and for the most part, if I click on it, you'll notice that we're in week three. We're supposed to be finishing up. I think you guys are finishing up 1.4. 2.2, 1.5, um, and then eventually we'll work on the review and then take the test, okay? That's being due on Tuesday for sure, okay? Um, let's go back to the module view. You also have this little um, descriptor in here that tells you how to get the notes that I use in the lectures. So if you click on this link, it will open it in a new window. And all it's saying in that little text box is that um, in order to download the file, you actually have to click this drop down arrow, and then you'll be able to click on the file and download it. Okay. You do need to come in here and say you are aware that you can download this work file. Um, this is uh, just for formality purposes, we're supposed to keep track and let students know where to get these files from, okay? Um, once you do that, you can submit it and it'll turn into 100, but I'm gonna go back to my modules. Once you have that file, you have all of the notes for the whole first unit, okay? Um, then you would come here where it says week two lectures. So this is the stuff that was due last week, okay? And it has all of the videos that you need to do the homework that's due that week. Notice we've got a P.3 lecture. We've got P.4 part one lecture and P. Point, uh, or R.4. It's supposed to be P.4, that's a typo, part two lecture. And then we have 1.4A lecture. So those were the sections that we were supposed to cover in week two. Right below that page is the weekly assignment for week two. And in there, it tells you the assignments that you need to do for the participation grade for week two. Okay, back to modules. 
Below that, you'll see the links to the homework assignments that need to be done in week two. And then finally, we get on to week three. So in week three, you'll find the 1.4B lecture, you'll find the P.2 part one lecture, the P.2 part two lecture, and then later today, I will be put uploading the 1.5A lecture, okay? But all those lectures should be in this page. So there's the 1.4B, P.2 part one, P.2 part two, and then down here it says 1.5A is coming soon. Going back to my modules, and then, of course, below that is the weekly participation grade, which tells us for this week, we have to have all of these homework assignments um, completed with 60% average or higher, okay? Um, now, I'm going to collect the data on Sunday, and I'm going to upload these things on Monday morning. So I will put that in there. However, um, the actual deadline for the... Um, Unit one is going to be on Monday. So you'll still have another day to improve your scores. So it says here that the homework should be complete by Sunday for your weekly grade, okay? However, the final deadline to improve is going to be Monday, um, February 7th, okay? Um, and then, these assignments, if they're completed or improved after Sunday, they won't change this assignment's grade. However, the grades will be updated and calculated for the overall unit one average, okay? And that overall unit one average, that's the one that's uh, worth 20% of your grade, okay? Um, Let's see, where was I? Oh yes, and then underneath that assignment is those sections that it haven't been linked yet before that we'll need to cover, okay? Um, once we get to week four, there's no more lectures. It's just the review and then the test, okay? So I, um, I will answer questions about the review. If you get stuck on any of those problems for the review, I highly recommend that you do the review. The review link is right here. That is where I get the test questions from, okay? Of course, there's new randomizations, right? So you don't know which randomization you're gonna get on the test, but that is where I get the test questions from. So it's in your best interest to do that unit review and to take it seriously when you do it. Um, really put in an effort into understanding what's on that review because chances are those things are what are gonna be tested on the test, okay? So definitely don't just be like, oh, that's not a homework assignment, I'm not gonna do it. It's going to be worth your while to do that, spend some time on that review, okay? Um, and then here's the overall unit one homework average. This is the one that actually counts to your grade, not like the weekly ones. The weekly ones are just for record keeping, so I can know who's staying on task each week and who's just not participating, not doing anything in a particular week, okay? This class is two classes in one, right? So you really cannot ever miss a single week of working on the material. I could understand you being out a day or two um, and not working on things, you know, every single day or five days a week, like which is preferred, um, or four days a week, which is like the bare minimum, three days and less is not enough, okay? Um, it does take time for you to absorb things. So I never suggest that anyone work on one um, homework per day, maximum one homework assignment per day, just because your brain needs time to process that. Um, especially if the material starts becoming new to you and it's not something that you already know, you definitely want to take your time with each section and um, make sure that you've absorbed everything from that section before moving forward, okay? You basically wanna master things as you go um, so that it's not all overwhelming at the end when you're just trying to get everything completed at the end, okay? Um, it's productive for learning that you do 
work on math little pieces very often versus trying to cram everything in before your test. It's not going to work. One, it's too much information to try to cram. Two, um, you have to have that practice down. And if you're just cramming information, that's not going to be enough to perform well on the test. Okay. And then two, even if you are successful in being able to cram the information and perform well on the test, chances are you're not going to be able to remember it three, four months from now. Okay. And this stuff, you have to remember. And you have to remember now this semester. You have to remember when you're in pre cal You have to remember when you're in calculus. You have to remember when you're in Cal 1, Cal 2, and if you're going as high as Cal 3, Cal 3 as well. Okay. So this stuff is never going to go away. You're going to always have to know it. So it's not good to try to cram everything in one week and hope that it's all going to just work out well. It won't, okay? It won't. That's why I'm setting the weekly requirements. I have a high fail rate in this class, and it's because online students seem to think that they can do everything for a whole unit in one week, and you cannot. I mean, you can physically do it. Will it be work, work in your favor in the future? No. It won't, okay? Now that doesn't mean that there's not outliers. However, I would not want to risk my grade in the class just to prove a point. I wouldn't want to be like, well, I can do all of my homework and I can do well on my test. <laughs> and then what if you don't, right? So it's not um, something I would, I would gamble with, okay? I've even asked my, my, my kiddo, she's taking a college class now. And I said, what would happen if you just didn't do anything in your class for one week, just one week, didn't do anything. She's like, I would fail. And I'm like, well, I'm glad you realized that because that is literally how it is in college. Okay. You cannot just miss a whole week and then expect to come back and just bounce back. It, it, and especially in this class, because it's two classes in one, not just one class. So you're not just doing one class's worth of work, you're doing two classes worth of work. That's why we have so many sections due in one week, okay? Um, and it's gonna get even heavier as we keep moving. I'm going very, very slow at the beginning because I wanna make sure that we all have our basics down. But once we start getting into like unit three, there's gonna be a lot of sections each week, okay? And so you definitely don't wanna try to leave all those sections to do in the final week where everything is due, okay? So that's the whole point behind my weekly um, requirements, okay? It's not because I'm just trying to be mean. It's because I know from experience that students, if they keep on task throughout each week, they, are, um, they have a higher chance of succeeding versus trying to do it all in one week at the very end, okay? So I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. I wanna make sure that you know how to navigate um, module two is up here as well. Once um, I have, I'm working on creating the test. I'm still working on how to word the problems and things like that. But once I get the test in here, you'll be able to take it next week. Okay. I hope to have it in here before the weekend. So that way, if you want to take it on Friday or any time during the weekend, you can if you wanted to. Okay. And then you could just move on to module two. So I'm going to start working on getting all of the, the units up so that you can start just moving ahead if you want to, okay? Um, so this one's going to work the same. Now be careful because in week four, yes, we're taking our test in week four, but there's also some unit two stuff that we're going to have to do in week four, okay? So we've got the week four lectures here, then the week four assignments are going to be these two. Then you have the week five lectures, the week five, um, the weekly attendance assignment, and then the sections you're gonna have to do for week five. Same for week six. Week six is just the review and the test. So there's your overall unit two average, there will be the test, and then the paperwork for the test, right? Paperwork is optional. So if you wanna turn it in, you have to know before you take the test. Because as soon as you submit the test, your paperwork is due within 30 minutes from that, okay? Um, so definitely read this document before you actually, or read this page before you take the test, okay? Um, but I hope this helps know how to navigate inside WebAssign. I'm sorry, wrong word, inside Canvas, okay? So this is our classroom. Canvas is our classroom. 
So you should have all the information that you need to be able to get everything done. I noticed a lot of people are going to like the grade book and then saying, you know, well, this is what I have in my grade book. And that's, that's true, but the grade book doesn't give you all the information you need to get those things in the grade book done. Um, so going to the grade book does not help you. Going to your assignments is not gonna help you. You need to be going into the modules so that you know what to do and when, okay? And so that you have access to those lecture videos, okay? Um, now, the other thing I wanna make sure you know how to do is that you know how to, um, how to navigate inside web assign. I'm trying to think which homework assignment I want to do. Okay, I'm just going to go to the first one. So um, these are the homework assignments. You know you have to get 60% um, average based on however many are due that week in a particular week. Um, that's just so that I know you're doing something that week. I'm not requesting that you master it and that you get 100. Um, all I'm doing is just asking that you... Um, have tried something, okay, um, and, and have done enough to get at least a 60, okay. Um, the mastery has to happen before the first test. So let me go to P.4 and see what that looks like. I'm trying to find one that I haven't been playing with so I can show you how WebAssign works. I am still getting some messages asking how WebAssign works, so I wanted to show you. So essentially what works is you're gonna answer all these questions um, and I'm gonna get a couple of them right. And then I'm gonna get a couple of them wrong. So I'm gonna get that one and then I'm gonna get this one wrong. Or I'll get it right. This one's not too bad to get. Okay, maybe it's wrong, I don't know. Um, and then I'm gonna get this one wrong. Got it wrong on purpose, okay. So let's pretend I answered all of these, right? And I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and once I'm done answering all of them, I'm going to submit this assignment. You can save until you've done them all, but after you've done them all, you do have to hit submit. Um, if you don't see green checks appear in a grade, you haven't hit submit, and I don't see a grade at all, okay? You just get a zero. So make sure that you do submit it at least once. Now, notice that the two that I answered correctly are uh, marked with checks, and then the one that I got wrong has an X, and everything else that I didn't answer, of course, has an X, okay? But I did mention to you guys that you have like 10 attempts to do the problems. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a button here that says new randomization. If you click on that button, it generates another version of all those problems and it allows you to have your second attempt, okay? Now, I want to point out that notice that numbers three and four, the problems that I had got right already, changed and they're blank now. Now I can answer them, And I'm doing this one wrong on purpose. So I don't want you to think I really don't know the answer. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get the three. I got it right the first time, but I'm getting it wrong. Um, this one, let me do it real quick. And then number five, which I got wrong the first time, I'm going to get right this time so that you can see what's happening, okay? So three and four, I had correct, five, I had wrong. And then when, I'm, when I went back for my second attempt, I did the top one wrong on purpose and the bottom two correct. So let's go see what happens when I submit this time. Notice that Number five is now correct. Number four is correct, although it was correct before. And number three has an X, but it has a star next to it. And it says, um, your answer is incorrect, but you received credit for a previous answer. So if you go look at the grade book, 
three, four, and five all still have a check, okay? Because of the way it's set to just always save your correct answers, when you do the new randomization, I don't need to redo number four, number five, or number three because they already have checks, okay? So when I click new randomization for my third attempt, I do not need to work on three, four, and five. I can just concentrate on all the others that don't have green checks, okay? Now, hopefully you're in a different boat than I am and you have a lot of green checks and just a few that don't have green checks. When you scroll through, you're just like, I need to do number two, number 10, and number 20, okay? And then you can scroll through and do number two, number 10, and number 20. Um, that is how that works. Now, if for some reason you're not able to get another randomization, it just doesn't give you the option to do another randomization, then you definitely want to click on request extension and type in the due date, whatever the due date of the assignment is, and then just put here, need more attempts. What we'll do is it'll generate a message to me and then it'll give me a little menu where I can select and add more attempts for you, okay? Or if you have an emergency and you need a deadline extension, you can also click that and then just tell me the deadline that you would like to have, okay? Um, I only grant deadline extensions if you actually have an emergency. Um, so if you do have an emergency, you need to explain the reasoning down here. Why, what's your emergency and why you need the extension, a deadline extension request, okay? Um, and then I think that's it. Okay, communication, this ask your instructor button. There's one on every single problem. And the reason why it's on every single problem is because if you do not know how to do number four first, per se, you would click ask your instructor, you would ask me your question, and then if you had already tried the problem, I would be able to see all of the responses that you've been putting in there, okay? So even if you got it wrong and you're like, miss, I don't know why I got this wrong, I'll be able to see what your wrong answer was and then tell you why it was marked wrong, okay? But I don't recommend that you click ask your instructor, ask your teacher, unless you actually have a question, okay? Um, typing in help, doesn't help, is not gonna help you or me. Help with what? I don't know what, right? How, where is it in the problem that you're getting confused? That's what we need to get through, okay? So you do have to ask a specific question, okay? If you have a general, like, I just don't know how to do this at all, like at all, then those are the kinds of situations where you need to be requesting one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring. And if I go back to our homepage, down here at the bottom, is where you have all the information for those one-to-one, -one, one one-on-one tutoring. You click here on this link. It'll ask you to schedule a day and a time with me. So let's say I wanna do it tomorrow. I will pick one of these time frames, um, and then we would meet and we would be able to say, hey, on number five, I just don't even know where to start. And we would have that conversation, okay? But the Ask Your Instructor button is helpful when it's just something short and a specific question that you need to get addressed. I can just respond right away. You can also use the remind texting. I have um, two students that message me like a picture of this problem and then a picture of what they've done on their paper. And then they're like, I don't know where, what to do next or I don't know where I went wrong. And then I can look at everything and help them and guide them through, through that problem, okay? So there's many ways to get help. Ask your instructor button on the problems themselves Go text me pictures of these problems and the pictures of your work using the texting, whether you're using the Remind app or you're just texting on your cell phone. It, both of them work. Um, or if you need to go to our homepage and schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me, okay? But there are many ways to get help. You also have um, access to what's called Math World. So I don't have a Math World button in here anymore. I thought I did. So I will be adding a math world button right underneath modules, okay? So when you come here into um, your course, you should see a math world button. I'm gonna show you what it looks like because I have one in another course. So it'll be right here. It'll say math world tutoring link on the left-hand side. And when you click it, it redirects you to math world's um, canvas page. 
And then you'll notice they have their hours. Um, and then it tells you like what classes all the tutors teach. You need this one, okay? Um, and so anybody that's teaching 1414, you can see their schedule. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can see the person's name, their schedule, what days they work, which days they don't work. Um, and then if you wanna actually Zoom with them, like today's Tuesday. So let's see, 1414 on a Tuesday. Uh, here's 1414 on a Tuesday. Oh, but that's between four and six. Right now it's about 1230. Oh, here we go, no, that's not 1414. Nope. Let me go back up to the top. <laughs> Um, no 1414 there. Here we go. No, he doesn't have any 12. It looks like everybody takes lunch at 12. Let's see. No, for some reason between 12 and 1, there's no, no 1414 help. So eat lunch, right? That's the time to eat lunch. <laughs> If for some reason there was a session and I wanted to join that session, you would just click on the teacher's the tutor's name and then it would open up some session for you just automatically. Okay. As long as you're clicking on that link during that day and that time that they say they're available, you should be able to get some assistance. Okay. So I will be adding that um, that link into our class so that you can have access to the tutors. Um, other than that, I think we are all good. I covered how to work in WebAssign. I covered how to navigate in the modules. And I even covered how to use the um, math road link once we get it up there. Okay, but it will be right here underneath modules. Um, I hope this helps. If you do still have questions, please, please let me know. Never wait until a deadline or after a deadline to ask me a question. It's too late at that point. Okay. You have to ask your questions as soon as they arise, okay? If you're confused about anything, you need to get clarification ASAP always, okay? Um, but other than that, you guys have a great day, and I will see you in another lecture video at some point. Bye.